What is happening in our solar system right now that has astronomers around the world losing sleep? What is this mysterious interstellar visitor doing just days before it makes its closest approach to Earth? And why are scientists whispering words like exhaust, propulsion, and payload when they should be saying comet? 3i Atlas is about to reach our cosmic doorstep on December 19th, and the latest data from the Hubble Space Telescope and the ALMA Observatory is rewriting everything we thought we understood about visitors from the stars. This object is performing in ways that defy explanation, shifting colors, emitting strange signals, and leaving behind a trail of heavy particles that some researchers believe could be seeds of life or something far more sinister. Stick around, because what happened next will blow your mind. If you are fascinated by the mystery of 3i Atlas and want to explore more mind-bending cosmic revelations, smash that like button and let the universe know you are watching. Every click helps keep the search for the unknown alive. December 19th, 2025. Mark this date. It is not just another day on the calendar. It is the day when the most mysterious object we have ever encountered makes its closest approach to Earth. We are talking about a distance of 1.8 astronomical units, roughly 269 million kilometers. Safe? Yes. Boring? Absolutely not, because what we are seeing right now just days before this encounter is changing everything we thought we knew about comets, about the cosmos, and perhaps about our place in it. Now, if you are new here, you have arrived at the critical moment. We are tracking 3i Atlas, the third confirmed visitor from the stars. But unlike Oumuamua, which tumbled past us as a dark, silent shard, and unlike Borisov, which looked like a standard snowball from deep space, 3i Atlas is performing. It is putting on a show that has astronomers baffled and the rest of us asking uncomfortable questions. And here is where things get really strange. We have new images, fresh data, and I need you to understand what we are looking at. On November 30th, the Hubble Space Telescope turned its powerful eye toward 3i Atlas. The object was moving away from the sun, retreating into the darkness of space. Now you would expect a comet to behave like a comet, right? A tail streaming away from the solar wind, fading as it cools simple physics, but 3i Atlas is flaunting a structure that should not be there. Hubble captured a clear, distinct anti-tail, and this is where it gets fascinating. In standard astronomy, an anti-tail is usually an optical illusion, a trick of perspective where heavy dust particles seem to point toward the sun, but this anti-tail is persistent. It is a spike of material pointing directly at the star it just survived passing. Avi Loeb, the Harvard astronomer who has been challenging mainstream narratives since Oumuamua first appeared, points out something deeply unsettling. This anti-tail seems to always point toward the sun regardless of the comet's motion. Think about that for a moment, a tail that defies the solar wind. Some researchers are whispering the word exhaust, Others are saying it is a counterflow, but the visual data is undeniable. There are two distinct jets. One is the standard smoky tail we expect from any comet. The other is this sharp sunward lance. It looks less like a crumbling rock and more like a stabilized object. And later in this video, we are going to explore what that stabilization might actually mean for the nature of this visitor. But the real story, the one that might change history, is not just in what we see, it is in what we smell. Not literally, of course, but spectroscopically. The Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA, has been analyzing the gas cloud surrounding 3i Atlas, and the cocktail it found is shocking. We are seeing massive amounts of methanol and hydrogen cyanide. Now, before you panic, yes, hydrogen cyanide is a poison. It is deadly, but in the context of the cosmos, it is something else entirely. It is a building block. It is a precursor for amino acids, for adenine, one of the fundamental bases of DNA. And methanol is a crucial ingredient for life as we understand it. Here is where it gets truly strange. 
The ratio, the amount of methanol compared to hydrogen cyanide is off the charts. We are talking about a ratio of 124 to 1. This is incredibly high. The only other time we have seen something even remotely close was with the bizarre Comet C 2016-R2. But 3i Atlas is from another star system entirely. It formed around an alien sun we have never seen. Avi Loeb poses a question that sends shivers down the spine. Is this object a serial killer bringing poison, or is it a friendly gardener? Imagine a gardener walking through a barren field scattering seeds, methanol, hydrogen cyanide, the ingredients for biology. Is 3i Atlas a natural panspermia vessel, a rock that just happens to be loaded with the starter kit for life? Or is it something else, something designed? The friendly gardener hypothesis suggests that this object might be intentionally distributing the chemistry of life. The high methanol content is the signature. It is not just a random mix. It is a specific, life-enabling cocktail. And it is venting this cocktail into our solar system right now as we speak. And remember that anti-tail, the one pointing at the sun. If you were a gardener, would you not want to direct your spray? I'm not saying it is aliens. But I am saying that if you were to design a machine to seed life across the galaxy, it might look exactly like this. A dark crust to protect the payload, jets to stabilize the orbit, and a wake of organic molecules left behind wherever it travels. We are watching a celestial crop duster pass by Earth. And on December 19th, it will be right in our neighborhood. But wait, there is more. The color. And this is something you absolutely need to understand before the 19th arrives. 3i Atlas has been shifting. It started red, deep, dark red. That is standard for interstellar objects, millions of years of cosmic rays baking the surface into a carbon-rich crust. We expected that. It was the color of age, the color of a traveler that has seen the void between stars. Then, as it dove toward the sun, it turned green emerald green, that is, diatomic carbon and cyanogen burning off. Rare but natural. It happens with some comets. But now, as it speeds away from the sun and heads toward us, it has shifted again. It is blue, a deep electric blue. Blue is difficult. In the language of comets, blue usually means ionized carbon monoxide or nitrogen. It means high energy. It means heat. But 3i Atlas is moving away from the heat source. It should be cooling down. It should be fading back to red or gray. Instead, it is glowing with this electric azure hue. Why? One theory is that the sun stripped away the old red crust, exposing a pristine icy interior that we have never seen before. A fresh surface from another star system. A rebirth of the object. But there is another possibility, a possibility that keeps people like Avi Loeb awake at night. What if the color change is not just chemistry? What if it is a byproduct of propulsion? And by the end of this video, you will understand why that question matters so much. This brings us to the movement itself, the trajectory. We know 3i Atlas is on a hyperbolic orbit. It is fast, too fast to be captured by the sun's gravity. It is just passing through, but the way it is passing through is making orbital dynamicists sweat. We are seeing non-gravitational acceleration. Now comets do this naturally. They heat up. Gas shoots out like a jet and it pushes the rock. It is the rocket effect, nature's little thruster. But usually that thrust is chaotic. It tumbles the comet. It is messy. It makes the object wobble unpredictably. 3i Atlas is smooth. The acceleration is consistent. And remember those jets, the anti-tail pointing at the sun. It is acting like a stabilizer. It is keeping the object oriented in a way that seems almost deliberate. Avi Loeb suggested months ago that if this object were artificial, it might use the sun for a gravity assist, an Oberth maneuver. You dive deep into the gravity well, fire your engines at the point of closest approach, and you get a massive slingshot boost. 3i Atlas dove deep. 
It survived a proximity to the sun that should have torn a loose pile of rubble apart. It did not disintegrate. It brightened. It shifted color. And it came out the other side with a trajectory that is just slightly off from a purely gravitational curve. Is it correcting its course to get a better look at Earth? Or is it simply trying to leave our system as fast as possible? And while it moves, it hums. We need to talk about those radio signals. On November 10th, rumors started flying across the scientific community. The Meerkat radio telescope in South Africa picked up emissions. Frequencies around 1665 and 1667 megahertz. The internet exploded. People were saying it is phoning home. It is a beacon. The official explanation? Hydroxyl radicals, molecules breaking down in the sunlight. Natural, boring, expected. Scientists say the comet is not talking. It is just screaming in radio waves as it boils away. But here is the thing about natural explanations. They work until they do not. We are seeing a combination of anomalies that is statistically uncomfortable. The trajectory, the survival of the solar passage, the anti-tail, the specific chemical payload, and now the radio glow. Each one alone could be explained away. Together, they paint a picture that demands attention. And here is a detail that does not make the headlines. The signal is steady. Usually, cometary radio noise bursts and fades as the object rotates and active vents turn toward and away from us. 3i Atlas produces a hum, a constant drone. If it is a natural object, it means the outgassing is perfectly distributed or the rotation is incredibly fast. If it is artificial, well, a steady hum is exactly what you would expect from a running system, a standby mode, or a carrier wave. We are now just days away from December 19th. On that day, 3i Atlas will be 1.8 astronomical units from Earth. That is far, about twice the distance to the Sun. But for our telescopes, it is point-blank range. The James Webb Space Telescope is scheduled to look. Hubble is already looking. Every radio dish that can tilt is going to be pointed at that blue dot streaking through our solar system. What are we looking for on the 19th? Are these seeds? Are they dormant biological packages protected by a carbon shell? Or are they just rocks? The timing is suspicious. It dumps this material after surviving the sun, after the sterilization of perihelion. It is almost as if the sun was the trigger. I have arrived. I am warm. Release the payload. And then there is the blue. I told you it shifted color, but let me explain why that is terrifying. In the cold vacuum of space, things do not just glow blue for no reason. Blue light is high energy. On Earth, you see it in lightning. You see it in the hottest flames. And you see it in nuclear reactors. It is called Cherenkov radiation. The official explanation is ionized gas, carbon and nitrogen burning off. And that is likely true. But the intensity, the persistence. 3i Atlas is moving away from the sun. It is getting colder every second. The burning should be stopping. The fact that it is increasing in the blue spectrum suggests an internal energy source. Is the core of this comet hot? Is it radioactive? Imagine for a moment, a ship. It dives past the sun to recharge. It uses the solar heat to jump, start a reaction. And now as it pulls away, its engines are hot. The blue coma is not just gas. It is exhaust. It is the glow of a drive plume pushing it toward that non-gravitational trajectory we talked about earlier. We are seeing the afterburner. And the most maddening part? We still cannot see it clearly. We have telescopes that can observe the beginning of time itself, but we cannot see the hull of this object. Why? Because of the coma. That beautiful glowing cloud of gas and dust is also a curtain. It wraps the nucleus in a fog that is thousands of kilometers thick. Is it a natural shield or is it a deliberate screen? Think about it. If you were passing through a system monitored by a curious species with radar and telescopes, would you not deploy a smoke screen? The radar pings are coming back fuzzy. 
We know it is big, maybe five kilometers wide. That is a city-sized object, but we cannot resolve the shape. Is it a jagged rock or is it a smooth cylinder? The gas hides everything. But on December 19th, the angle changes. As 3i Atlas passes Earth, the sun will be illuminating it from the side. We might, just might, get a glimpse through the thinning tail. We might see the shadow of the nucleus. And this is where the serial killer theory comes back into focus. If that blue glow is radiation, and if those seeds are not friendly, then we have just been dusted with something we do not understand. We are worried about it hitting us, but maybe it does not need to hit us. Maybe it just needs to fly by. Now let me tell you about the silence. That is what awaits us after December. We have spent months obsessing over the noise, the radio hum, the chemical signals, the visual spectacle of the tails. But the most chilling part of this encounter is not what 3i Atlas is doing. It is what it is not doing. It is not stopping. It is moving at 30 kilometers per second relative to the sun. It is on an escape trajectory. By March 2026, it will cross the orbit of Jupiter. By the early 2030s, it will be a ghost in the outer dark, leaving our solar system forever. It did not slow down to say hello. It did not hail us. It did not land on the White House lawn. And that is what scares the scout theorists the most. If you are exploring a jungle, you do not stop to talk to the ants. You map the terrain. You take samples, you drop your markers, and you keep moving. Is 3i Atlas the marker? Remember that anti tail, the one pointing relentlessly at the sun? We assumed it was a stabilizer or an exhaust plume. But what if it is an antenna, a high gain relay beaming data back to somewhere else? And what about the seeds, that heavy gravel we talked about, the payload that is now drifting in our solar system, settling into stable orbits? If this was a scout, its job was not to invade. Its job was to prepare, to plant something that might wake up in ten years, or a hundred, or a thousand. We are left with an uncomfortable reality. We have been visited. Was it a rock? A friendly gardener bringing the ingredients of life? A serial killer dusting us with poison? Or a scout mapping our defenses? On December 19th, we get our last best look. The data we gather in the next few days will be analyzed for decades. We will look for the hull through the thinning gas. We will listen to the hum. We will analyze that electric blue light. But after the 19th, the door starts to close. The visitor turns its back. The light will fade. The hum will drop below the static. The universe just knocked on our door. We need to be awake to answer. Do not stop here. The universe is full of secrets waiting to be uncovered. Click on the next video and join us as we explore even more astonishing mysteries from the farthest reaches of space. The cosmos is speaking, and together we are listening.